everybody. I hope you're all very, very well and have had an amazing festive period. Uh, now we're into January, it's back to normal really, isn't it? Nothing seems to have happened for so long. Um, so I'm back at the Vice because I'm not fishing at the moment because it's cold and wet and I've got children at home still, they're still on Christmas holidays. Um, and this instalment is going to be another buzzer, a slightly different one to the one I tied last time. Um, this is by far and away my most productive buzzer ever. The takes on it are savage. Um, I have it in size 8, 10, 12 and 14 in my still water box. You could probably tie it for the rivers as well. But I don't have that in my river box. Um, and over here in the UK, the buzzer is the pupae of the non-biting midge in the UK. Now there are 400 different varieties of non-biting midge. Um, and the life cycle is larvae, which is really where they're grubbing around in the silt on the bottom of the lake uh, in their bloodworm stage. The pupa, which is the buzzer stage, which I'm going to tie. And then you've got the emerger and the adult as well, which are really good in the, in the spring and summer months when buzzers come off and there's a hatch on. But this pupa stage is very, very popular in the UK. Um, and I fish this all year round. I fish buzzers in winter. There's, there's always going to be a hatch. Um, you've just got to be aware of that hatch and... and you might only have a half hour window, but it's well worth having these in your box at any time in the year. But really March through to June and then September through to November are when they really, really catch fish for you. This one is called the Corran Buzzer. Um, some people will say, no, it's not. It's called the Vicar. I don't think this is the Vicar. I think the Vicar has a rib in it. My fly does not have a rib in it. And I know this is the Corran Buzzer. But again, I'm not going to argue. It's your fly. Um... Tie it how you like and call it what you want. So in the vise, I have a size 10 Togan's wet fly hook. Um, and this is super simple. There are literally only two other materials. The breathers are going to be Vicuna dubbing in coral. And there's a tiny little hotspot, I guess you want to call it. And that's silver tinsel. Uh, this is unbranded, I've no idea what it is, but any old silver tinsel will do. Again, if you want to use hollow, that's fine. If you want to use a different colour, that's fine. There are, there are loads of options to tie here, but this is the original Coran buzzer that I've been shown. And this one works for me better than any other. Uh, and the only other thing to use is some black thread. This is um, UTC 140, just to give me a, a bit of bulk. Um, and it's, it's, it's so quick and simple to tie, we're just going to crack right on. And the first thing to do, once you've got your thread on at the eye, is snip off the excess, obviously, and then we're going to catch in the breathers. And what I've done is I've taken some of that coral um, vicuna dubbing. I've lined up all of the strands just by pulling it apart, putting it on top, pulling it apart, putting it on top, and then I've just t tightened it into a, a quite a loose dubbing noodle, um, and we're just going to get ahead and tie it on. Um, I'm going to obviously going to cut it to size at the end of the tie, and what we may well see is some of this material come out again. That's fine. I don't like thick breathers. The reason I like the vicuna is that it is a natural material. So watch, we're probably going to pull that and some comes out. There we go. Um, it's a natural material, which uh, means that... Um, let's snip that off so I can concentrate. It moves in the water a bit better um, and a bit more naturally than, in my opinion anyway, than polypropylene yarn. And also, I know nothing in nature that naturally occurring in nature, let me add, that is absolutely bright white, like polypropylene yarn. So, you know, on those bright days when the fish are a bit wary, this could make all the difference. Just having a slightly off-white breathers and um, that natural movement. So I've gone down once with the thread. I'm going to come back up with the thread. Just covering any dubbing that's sticking out, making sure it's nice and tidy. There we go. And then, what we're going to do is I'm going to keep going. I like 
my, most of my buzzer is thin, but this Corn buzzer, it does, um, create some savage takes. So I'm just going to go back down again, and a bit beyond where I've tied in, I finished opposite the barb of the hook. So I'm just going to go that little bit further. There we go. And then come back up again. Just gives the fish something to see, a nice silhouette. Right, and just where the thorax is going to start, we're going to tie in our silver wire. No, not wire. What am I talking about? It's all this Christmas sugar and spice. I'm going to tie in the silver tinsel. And what I do here is I use the weight of the bobbin and loop it, loop it around the top. Let me show you that again. So I have the silver wire, the silver wire, I'm going with wire, the silver tinsel. And I just push it against the thread, bring it up over the top, and then the weight of the bobbin holds it in place. Um, and then you can position it how you like, um, so on and so forth. Now, I'm happy with that. Not going to trim off the excess just yet. In fact, I'll cut it to size. We'll take that excess off to there. And then we can cover it up when we go down the head. And this is literally going to be one or two turns. It's a collar. So again, I can see why people say it's the Vicar, because there is effectively that collar. But I've always known the Vicar to have a rib in it as well, and this fly doesn't. So um, that's my argument, and I'm sticking to it. Once you've, once you've captured it in, Again, we don't want really any unsightly bumps. And we're going to cover this in resin as well, so you don't actually need to worry too much. As long as you've secured that silver tinsel, not wire, take, oh dear me, take the excess off. And then it's a question of covering what you've got left and building the thorax. I'm just going to turn that round so I can make sure I cover the wire. I do not want any silver showing through. Sort out that unruly alpaca fur, and then back and forth a few times, and that's why I'm using 140 because it allows you to build a, thor a thorax on a buzzer pretty quickly. And you're looking for sort of a slight rugby ball shape, just any any type of bulge is fine. And then when we get to the end. We're going to do a couple of wraps in front of the um, front of the breathers just to kick them up like that. Lovely. And then we're going to whip finish. My whip finish is broken, so please excuse the slight cack handedness. I do need a new one. So that's done. You pull the thread tight. This 140 again can be pulled about pretty robustly without it snapping. Trim off the excess and then trim your breathers. And again, breathers. I don't like long breathers on my buzzers. So we're going to go there. Lovely. And then you're going to trim off the stragglers. There's always stragglers. Whatever you're using for your breathers. There we go. Perfect. And that is literally the finished article. As I say, the takes on it is savage. All that it requires now is um, a dousing of your favourite UV resin. You could do three coats of varnish if you want to. UV resin is just quicker. Um, mine's got really goopy as well. I'm not sure why. But nonetheless. Um, uh, some of your favourite resin. Hopefully that's enough. I'll spread it about with a dubbing needle. Um, and you can shape it how you want if you want to put a bit on the hook at the back. But just make sure the entire fly is covered because part of the attraction is the slight shine. And also it allows the fly to sink more uniformly through the water. 
which is important. Now I fish this as part of a team of three, usually on the point if I've tied a big one. If I've not tied a big one, then um, it'll go on one of the droppers. But it's, it's interesting, as, as I say, I've always said in my videos, it's your fly tight how you like, tight how you want, that sort of thing. What I also do with this, um, and I've not seen anyone else do this, but it's not it's not rocket science, I'm not claiming it's my idea. It You can tie a bead on the head and have it sink really quickly and fish it really deep if you want to. I like fishing this through the layers, which is why I don't put a bead on it. But I've also um, tied one with a CDC shuttlecock and also a foam head. So when the fish are really high in the water, this is going to sink too quickly to um, be able to use it. I'm just going to cure that resin. And by putting uh, a shuttlecock on it or a foam a foam shuttlecock really, or a CDC shuttlecock, means it's going to sit in that surface film. So again, you've got one that rides really high just under the surface, um, about to turn into that emerger. And um, in the, you know, the right conditions, when fish are taking it that shallow, it's absolutely uh, deadly, absolutely deadly. So, you know, dispense with the breathers and stick some CDC or foam in, and you've got a high riding one. Uh, the breathers with some resin it will sink nicely and you can straight line buzzers that's how i like fishing them as a team and then if you stick a tungsten bead on or a brass bead um then it's going to sink quicker and if you know if you know the fish are at 10 feet there's no point having one of these on it's going to flutter through the layers have one with a bead on and get it right down to 10 feet really quickly and that's it simple as that three materials one hook job done um tie up some let me know how you get on find me on instagram reach out to me through tokens if you have any trouble i'm more than happy to uh help out either by direct messaging or jumping on a, a web chat call um but yeah let me know how they go uh tight lines and i will see you again thanks everyone mm -hmm.